Today's show is brought to you by Milwaukee-based Spike Brewing, designer and manufacturer of premium quality home brewing equipment. Is your beer falling flat? Are you sick of setting up all that gear for a brew day and running out to buy propane? Frustrated by the weather dictating your brewing schedule? Take it inside and avoid the cold, wet winter with the turnkey electric system from Spike Brewing. Trusted by homebrewers and pros alike, the Spite system will change the way you brew and take your beer to new heights. And whether you're interested in a simple upgrade from a glass carboy to a stainless steel fermenter, or you're switching from propane to electric, Spite Brewing has the solution for you. Reach out today to spitebrewing.com forward slash homebrew happy hour, and their team can help you figure out what you need to make the most of your brew day. Spite Brewing. Pursue what's possible. Entertaining shows with content that spreads information and sparks discourse throughout the community. This is the Pearl Media Network. Oh, hello, and welcome to the Homebrew Happy Hour. This is the show where we supply the answers to your homebrewing questions and discuss all things related to craft beer. If you have a question you would like us to discuss on a future episode, visit homebrewhappyhour.com and click on the submitted question link at the top of the page. Or now you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107. I am your host, Joshua Stubing. Today, I am joined by the Director of Operations at HomebrewSupply.com. Haven't had him on in a while, Mr. Laddick, Joe Ermis. Joe, my friend, how are you doing? Howdy. I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. How about yourself? Looking good. I was here to go with the backwards cap, too, but um, I didn't because the, the light was in my... When I wear the backwards cap, my lighting in here, I got to do something about it because it's like... Um, I, so, I, my hair, I'm balding, and I, and I go short now. And, yeah. and when I take off the hat, I look like completely bald. I look completely oh, you, bald. Yeah, you got it. Got it trimmed down pretty. Close. I, I, I did now. Yeah, I'm, I'm embracing. I'm embracing the male pattern baldness, man. Um, yep. It's I'm been in the same boat. Are you really bald? I've never noticed. Oh, yeah. Are you yeah. really thinning? Oh, shut up. That's a. Oh, yeah. That that's. But but if I cut it down, if I buzz it like you have it, like it doesn't <laughs> it, look much much other yeah. much different than. You. I was gonna do like what a uh, Bane in uh in the third Dark Knight movie. Where he's like, oh, you are, you think you're bald. I was born in it or something like that. <laughs> I, I, I've been, I've been thinning. I'm 34. I think I've been thinning since 21. And like when it, well, first, that's, that's pretty abnormal. It usually works the other way around. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I, I've been, uh, Oh, I'm no, thinking of, yeah. I'm thinking of overall weight. No, yeah. No, you're no, talking no. about your, oh, your no, hairline. Oh, no, yeah. I've been growing. I've been growing <laughs> in places and losing in others. And in yeah. the, the back hair, that's what bothers me. I, it, why is it? Like the average male, when they're balding, it goes in other places. Yeah. Like my chest is just a freaky forest of mm-hmm. nastiness, and my back is a Sasquatchonian type of uh, thing. And and my poor wife, she married me before she knew any better, and now she stuck with me. I mean, we said I do to thick and thin. She just didn't know what meant thin up top and thick in the chest. Right. Eh, eh, you was, mix it up every once yeah. in a while on her, but. Um, I know things are busy up there. I appreciate you taking the time to do the show with me. Yeah, of course. I would be remiss if I didn't use this as an opportunity to also complain. Just at the top of the show, real quick, guys. I got some people who wrote in when I did the interview with Spike last week. They're like, we wanted to hear about X, Y, and Z, and all we heard was you were complaining about Todd and James being gone. And blah, 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 blah. Well, yeah, I'm going to get out of the way right now. They're gone. I'm annoyed by it. They're sending me photos still. It's annoying. There, it's done. I'm over it. That, that's the annoying part is them flaunting, you know. <laughs> Thank you. Pork knuckles and uh, yeah. you know, yeah. But see, yeah. and flaunting's not even like that's their social media. My my phone, my oh, friend, sure. is Personal blowing up. Todd's still yeah. Todd's texting me. He texted me a photo of this guy they just met, and he's uh he this Korean guy that they're in Frankfurt because they're flying out soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, tomorrow, I think they're flying home, and he's like, "Oh, I met this Korean guy. He does marketing. You'll you're gonna love him as your boss." That's what he touched me. <laughs> and they're they're still you know just hammering beers together. Oh, we're world travelers. Blah, blah, blah. But no, like I said, I'm over it. I'm done. I'm not gonna. Give, I told Todd, um, we have uh, we're doing a translation project right now for CM Becker, taking like product stuff and and translating it into proper German. 
and uh, we use this service called Upwork, which I, I, I'm sure a lot of people, I shouldn't have said their name. They don't give me money. I shouldn't mention them. That's where but, you can hire uh, like outsource uh, subcontract. Exactly. Much. And, and right. we, we've done it before for like photo touch ups and stuff like that. And very reasonable. And it, it's a cool marketplace. But we put out one for this translation project. And I, I made a fake listing like to make it look like I did a listing for podcast hosts. And I uh-huh. said, I told Todd, I said, I, I got two spots open now, man, you're done. And That's uh, funny. so we, we got one spot because I know you'll you'll take over one spot and we just got to replace James. And uh, then we'll have a whole new show. Then we'll be on our way. Then we'll be on our way. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, um, also, I just realized I left it on my table here. Uh, I see that. Yeah. The kombucha I'm growing in the back. um, I'm excited about that. I'm told it will help my sugar addiction. That was Lorena told me uh, kombucha is good for that. So mm-hmm. I imagine it's much better than drinking a soda. Yeah, you know? and I and I am I've I've come to grips that I I think I'm legitimately addicted to sugar. I will, you know, I've been doing all the exercise stuff and upping it, and I'm training a bunch, and then I get home at night and uh, I I normally eat out of boredom, but I've been hungry and I'll go in my pantry and for, I mean, it is like this uh, reptilian part of my brain that sees the sugary cereal that we buy. They're for my kids. Really though. I feel ashamed to say that they're for my kids. We shouldn't be buying that crap for our kids. And I'm doing my kids a health favor by eating the entire box right. in yeah. one that way they don't, Yeah, the sugary stuff and leave behind the Wheaties. And I'm that way. saving exactly. them from diabetes. Right. right. <laughs> I'm saving them from themselves. If, I get I get those cravings, too, though. It's not like every day I want something sugary, but it's like, you know, late at night, especially it's like, man, I could go for like, you know, something sweet. Um, exactly. Yeah, like when I that's what's so funny is when I'm drinking. I don't want sweets. Like I think the beer fulfills that maybe for my sure. palate. And I, I want savory when I'm drinking. Like when we're at Todd's place and I'm raiding the cabinet, I want savory yeah. or salty. Pretzels or, yeah, yeah. Pretzels or exactly. peanuts or something. Perfect. Yeah. But like when I'm sober, which is like all the time that I'm home because I don't keep the – we don't the cake readers at my pop's house now. Late mm-hmm. night, I, my, my brain is just like, oh, we want some sugar. And I tell my brain, you're absolutely right. We do want some sugar. See, you just got to keep some beer in the fridge and then you can skip the cereal and have yeah, some beers. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then my kids can also get fat and diabetes, and then I will. Yeah, oh, it's a family affair. We will. Uh, vicious cycle. It's a vicious cycle. <laughs> <laughs> I have, um, I have some quick announcements before we get into the questions. Um, we did last week's episode with Spike. If you missed out, Ryan Austin was a, a fantastic guest. We're getting a lot of good feedback on that. We talked about a number of things, their product catalog. We talked about a little bit. They don't want to spill the beans too much on the new all-in-one the single system, uh, the single vessel system that they're putting mm-hmm. out, the brew in a basket. But uh, we're doing a live Q&A with Ryan to all members of our Patreon group at homebrew, or pardon me, patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour. Joining at any level, they range from $1 a month up to 50 which the top tier comes with a recipe every month. You get uh, the, the Sam Becker hat, the shirt, the whole bitch swag bag. If you go on our Instagram, I usually post what, what comes in it in a photo form so you see. Our $35 tier is brand new. does the exact same thing. You get a recipe every other month, which a lot of – we've actually had a lot of people sign up for that recently. I think the every monthers are like the hardcore, like we're brewing, we're sharing, we're drinking. And the $35 monthers are like – we brew every other like the beer lasts us to the next brew day, which you know planning out a brew day every seven weeks or whatever. Yeah, and so that makes it, sense. we have, and we well, have and it's also it's a good. I think it's a good idea to have that tier because you may not want to brew a, a a selected recipe every month. You may want to brew one that's selected every other month, and then even if you're drinking the same amount as tier one or whatever it is, you could brew your own recipe. You know that that exactly. Recipe. Yeah, and and again, our buddy Fred, he he had mentioned it to me. Blind brew guy. I didn't mess it up this time, Fred. He uh, on Instagram, really, really cool guy. He brews with his family as well as daughter. So um, I like giving shout outs to people that brew with their family. It's a cool thing. And he he was like, hey, have you ever thought about adding another tier? And I and of course, I was like, of course I did. Yeah, of course I had that idea. And then I told Todd, listen to this great idea I came up with. And uh, that's how I keep my job. So we are doing it Friday, 9 a.m. I know it's kind of an awkward time, but uh, if you go, if you join, you'll get a notification or a post about how you can watch it. It's through our private Facebook group. Not everyone does that. So check your inbox on Patreon because I do. I'm going to give a special little unlisted YouTube link that I will 
simultaneously broadcast to there as well for Friday. So if you want to participate in the live Q and a, you can, uh, you could do that as well. Ask your questions then, or if you're not going to be there, but you want your questions addressed because we do publish the videos for members of our Patreon to always check out whenever you want. You can send them to my email, Joshua at homebrewhappyhour.com. I'll make sure to bring them up. And that way, if you can't attend live, you can always rewatch it. And, and Ryan is very, what, what I liked about him when we were talking off air and, and on air, super nice guy. You can tell on air off air. He is very much like a, yeah, just get the questions and I would, I would love to help them. Like he's, they, I know it's in their best interest. That's just called customer service. Probably. I'm just that bad at customer service. I don't realize. Cause that's like every, you do that every day. I hear you on the phones, dude. Like that's probably my, some of my favorite part of the job. Honestly, I love just talking to our customers. And even if they're not our, somebody who needs support with a brew day or something, it, it makes me feel accomplished kind of helping people through their brew day or whatever the case may be. Exactly. The logistic side of it too. That's like up your alley. And Ryan was the same way where it's like, yeah, I love hearing like, tell me the, you know, scenario you're envisioning and we will make, we will engineer a solution, which is impressive to me. Cause usually I'm just like, if I can, I, okay, no, no, don't even go through it. Don't worry about it. It's, it's too much of a hassle. Okay. Don't, don't, don't do it. But send that person to Zach. Yeah, exactly. That, <laughs> that is what I do. That's right. <laughs> Listeners of the show who are also customers of Cat Connection, I apologize for doing that to y'all. But kidding aside, uh, what else do I have? We have, okay, the the new tier at $35, the live Q&A this Friday. Oh, I ha- was reminded, I emailed the winner of December's giveaway. So part of our Patreon, if every tier... I, I think even the $1 tier has an entry into our monthly giveaway. Someone reminded me, dude, you're not doing a good enough job on the show telling people what the giveaway is for the month. Uh, uh, and and most of the times I don't even mention it at all. And so when I message them like, Hey, you won. They're like, won what? And they forget that it's even part of it. So I'm going to, I have it in the show notes now <clears throat> to always remember. I should going forward. I'll do the drawing live. Cause that seems like it'd make more sense to do it for our private Facebook group. But I did it because I realized this is the last episode of the month. I just went ahead and did the drawing and Mary Beth H who I believe is the only Mary Beth in our group, in our Patreon group. So I don't have to say the whole last name on air. Uh, you are the winner. Our, our January prize. If you missed it is a one faucet basic homebrew kegging kit from kegconnection.com. So I uh, check your Patreon inbox for details on claiming the prize. Just, I think I just asked you, Hey, is this really your address? Cause you don't have to give a real address when you join Patreon. It asks you for your address, but one of them put like one, two, three, this is not real street. And uh, that wasn't her, but I just want to make sure the one that you put on was real. So Mary Beth, congratulations. We don't have February's ki- uh, giveaway prize announced just yet, but we do have very exciting stuff coming down the line that I can't quite announce it. But it's uh, just to give you a hint, it, it will greatly uh, affect our monthly recipes for the better, like tenfold for the better. Very excited when this, all the details come through and I can announce it. But we do know next month's recipe. I can say this much. It's going to be the Simply Juice New England Pale Ale from Homebrew Supply. And uh, I'm very excited about that. That recipe is a good entry into the hoppier side. It's not going to punch you in the gut with hops. And um I don't remember if your last pail that you did was some derivative of this. Did you, you, the one that I brewed when we did the Anvil Brew Day Foundry is going to be, it's pretty similar to that. There's a little different hops um, profile that I used, uh, but a lot of the, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of the same idea as far as the style goes. It's a good introduction to like a hazy, hoppy, um, but not super bitter New England style. So um, and it's not like a New England double IPA where it's, you know, 9%. It's, you know, uh, sessionable. I think it's clocks in somewhere around five, maybe 6%. Um, and I, I should preface, um, when we, when we're sending those out, we, we changed the name about a year ago. And I, I don't know if the recipe sheet, like the instruction sheet has changed yet. So I, we, it was formerly named wicked smart, uh, like a Boston thing. Um, but it's simply pale or simply juice now. So, um, keep that in mind when you guys start receiving those. it was called wicked smart. <laughs> That's yeah. the best. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go watch Goodwill hunting and right. <laughs> uh, hey, you like apples? <laughs> Golly, that what a good movie. What I a good movie. movie. You know, Mom Williams, 
killed that role. I, he really did. Like we were, ta- I was talking about that with the guy I trained with recently. Like how good of an actor was Robin Williams? And I, then that actually led us because we talked about Goodwill Hunting. And then I said, and Matt Damon, how good of an actor? <laughs> like I just watched The Departed again for like the. It was probably the ten thousandth time I've watched it, but I haven't in a few years. Um, what an amazing movie! And Leo really DiCaprio. Now, now this is a movie review happy hour. Sorry, <laughs> I go down trails. But anyway, yes, I got all the announcements out of the way. If you want more information on the prizes, on the recipes, on supporting us and joining our homebrewing community, you can go to patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour. Join any tier. We appreciate it. Our community is growing. It's a very humbling thing. We do appreciate everyone, even if you're not a part of it. All the messages you send us, following us on Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff, your interaction, it keeps us going and like literally it keeps me employed. So thank you all for everything you do. So we have a few questions for the show today, starting with our first one who came from Jacob using the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Jacob wrote, hello, I've been brewing for about three years now and I'm in the process of doing a Brett IPA, which will be my first brew using Brett. That's a first brew using Brett. I know y'all aren't the biggest fans of the Funk Sour, which is why I brought Joe on for this show. I I wasn't going to do this question with Todd or James, but it made sense with Joe. I know you're not the biggest fans of the Funk and Sour, but hoping y'all can help here because primary will be done with Saccharomyces. Then I'll move to a secondary where I'll pitch the Brett C. I've read varying time frames of how long to let the Brett work before kegging, anywhere from four weeks to nine months. I plan to keep secondary at around 80 degrees, but I'm open to any advice on temperatures and how long to leave it that you might have. Love the show. Keep on doing what you're doing. Prost. Uh, again, it lo- like not, not even joking. That's why I brought you on the show. I am not a fan of the funk or sour. I'm willing to bet my life savings. Todd's never brewed a sour. And, and, and James... That 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 Kolsch that we had, it was a. It, did you ever try that that Kolsch that was kind of sour that was sent to us? It was on purpose. It was that style. Uh, no, uh, I don't think I did try that. It was more like a Gosa Kolsch, but uh-huh. so so not like ah, kind of sour, but right. but a sou- little bit of a twang to it or something. <laughs> right, yeah, but that's not. And it's self admittedly, it was enough for me to not like it. But yeah, you have brewed. You're, you've done kettle sours. You've done. You, you brewed your, I've brewed, your... I've brewed a, I've tinkered around with sours a bit. I've never made one that I've been like thoroughly impressed with. Um, and, and I'm usually not with most of my beers. It just, I, I don't, I always find flaws in them. Um, so I, I don't have a ton of experience with bread and lactose. Um, just, I mean, uh, uh, lacto, uh, not lactose. Uh, so I've, I've done a little bit of, of research just to kind of try and make sure I've, I've got some good points to bring up. Um, if it were me personally, I would firm the temperature wise, I would go with kind of what your, most of the, whatever strain you get, if it's from Y yeast or white labs or Imperial or Omega or wherever it's coming from, they'll typically give you a temperature range to kind of shoot for. So I, I usually recommend going with what the actual laboratory suggests on that and 80 sounds like it would be kind of right in the wheelhouse. So um, I think you're, you're right there. Um, one thing to consider is from some of the stuff I've been reading, you, you can actually change your hop profile a bit by introducing Brett uh, after fermentation. It will kind of play with the flavor of the hops. Um, I think I was reading somewhere that you may uh, get less of that if you do more like flavoring uh, aroma ad- later additions versus like your, your, it may interact a little bit more with like the bitterness of, of your hops. So something to kind of just keep in the back of your mind. Um, but yeah, it's on the, and now on the time length, um, that's going to be, it's going to be pretty varied. There's going to be people, I obviously, I, I imagine the longer you leave it in there, the more flavor that you're going to get from the bread. Um, so what I would probably do is let it go of your minimal kind of time frame that you're thinking and do some taste samples, see where it's at. And then if it's not quite to where you want it to be, kind of let it go a few more weeks and get another sample. I would, I would probably age it to taste um, to just kind of make sure you're not just forgetting about it. And then you come back and you've, you turn it into vinegar or something like that. Um, and then uh, another thing that um, you should probably keep in mind is Brett can actually dr- continue to eat sugars uh, versus like Saccharomyces where you're going to kind of have hit a wall uh, fermentation and your fermentation is complete and there is going to be 
you know, whatever the gravity is going to be 10, 10 or 10, 12 to 10, 15 left. Bretomyces will go in there and start eating more of those sugars. So a lot of people say what you, what you want to consider is using a bit more caramel or crystal malt to put more unfermentable sugars in there. Um, and that way you don't dry it out too much. Um, so those are some of the kind of, some of the main points that I've kind of re- uh, found that, that people bring up when, when using Brett, uh, especially with IPAs, uh, and, and especially as a secondary after you've, after, after primary you introduce it. So, um, but I mean, that's one of the biggest things about brewing is, is, uh, experimenting, trying new things and, and kind of, uh, for lack of a, uh, you know, kind of figuring it out as you go sometimes. Right. Um, because, well, you know, as much information's out there, you know, you're not going to find a, a, a exact answer that says this is how you need to do it. And there's no other way, you know, there's, there's a hundred different ways to do pretty much. Anything well, and thank God, because we wouldn't have a show. I mean, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. And so they would find the answer and they'd be like, why am I writing in? Well, yeah, I'll tell you why you're writing in, because this is your reminder that you're getting a $25 gift card to techconnection.com. But besides that, um, no, I have no experience with Brett. I know I, I wouldn't say we're out of like, remember when funk was the rage? Like, um, uh, what is the podcast? And they're the, like one of the biggest groups ever milk the funk. Great guys. Mm-hmm. Great show. Uh, like sours and funks. I, I think maybe regionally it's still like where where hop, super hoppy beers. I I remember early uh, four years ago, six years ago, when it, everything was all about the sour, all about you know, yeah. And, and Brett, you know, you hear all about Brett, you hear all about Sacrifice, yeah, you know, uh, all the sour stuff. Pellicle porn is a hashtag that I never want to see again. But I did it all in my feed. Uh, y'all mm-hmm. are disgusting. Oh, look at this pellicle porn. No, <laughs> that looks gross. That's infected beer. Yeah, that's infected. <laughs> but but like I I I I'm willing to be called stupid for asking this. It's a very simple. Uh, a uh, newbie kind of question. It, aging is sour, like a, a, a style that you're souring, like an IPA. Is that going to affect, I mean, an IPA is not something, in my opinion, that you normally, like, do you, do you, you don't want it sitting around age, long, right? Right, right. I mean, that's the, typically the idea behind IPAs is to drink them as fresh as possible because your hops do fade over time. Um, now, introducing Brett, it it may still be technically an IPA, but it changes um, it changes the dynamic of the beer to where you're shooting for almost that old world feel of an IPA to where a lot of people may do it in a barrel to get that oakiness and that 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 Brett a lot of times used to occur you know maybe not intentionally but naturally so you're going to get some of those funky farmhouse kind of flavors um, so I mean if that's the idea behind. Uh, adding Brett to your IPA, then, then you're not going for a, a more uh, West Coast traditional. Uh, okay. You know. Yeah. Thanks for cl- only because I remember I showed you a Reddit article like a month or two ago where they were like, hey, I'm, I'm aging my New England IPA. I need some tips. And I thought that it was an April Fool's joke. Like a joke, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't. And people are like, no, I've been aging my New England IPAs. And and I didn't comment because people on Reddit already hate me. Uh, so I didn't need any more. I didn't need any more downvotes. But they, I, I really was like, oh, wait, aging that. So when I see this, that, that was going to be my follow-up question is, is IPA the most common style people are funkifying? That's not a word, but or, or is no. there a, what, what's, no, the, what, what's the most common? Not. Just ale? Well, I mean, there's there's... Styles that are intentionally funked off the get go, any kind of sour mash. I mean, you're you're souring it before you even start boiling. So uh, things like Berliner Weizens and Gozes or go, uh, Ghost uh, style beers. Um, I mean, there's you know farmhouse uh, Belgian style farmhouses. Um, any kind of farmhouse. I mean, those those from the get go. Yeah, right, yeah, intentionally soured. Um, if it's not in the mash, it's you know you're pitching bacteria directly into it after your boil so uh yeah there's there's plenty of of styles like blondes uh those very light delicate beers a lot of times really kind of show or uh allow the showcase of your sourness whether it's like a lacto and it's a kind of a tart funkiness or it's the bread and you get more of that like farmhouse um kind of 
funk. So. You still have that pickle beer for us? Is that still in I the do. fridge? Yeah, it's yeah. In the, I see it every time I go <laughs> I'm, get, I'm so get sorry. cream for coffee. I was no, gonna, no, you're good. I was I'm, gonna, exci- I'm excited for it. I was going to be up there this week. That's why I was like, hey, I'm, I'm going to be up there soon. Don't worry about it. And then Todd was like, well, why don't you just come back? To Germany. Yeah, why don't you just oh, come oh, up when right. I come get back? And I was like, right. Okay, that sounds great. And then no, I, remember- I drank I drank the other two by myself and then I shared one with my with my parents and then uh so this is the last one. I I just want a, a bunch of people to try it versus me drinking it all myself because it's 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 a sour funky pickle beer and it's not something that I want to drink at home, you know, as a session beer. It's, totally. it's something that uh you know, I just it's so bizarre that I want everybody to get a little try of it. No, I like that. And that is exactly like the context of how I enjoy beers that I don't want to drink by my, like, like that, a sour, I wouldn't drink, like when we get sent sours or when we, like when you and I went out that one time with Andrew and, mm-hmm. and to Great Notion is the name, I always forget it, up in Portland, beautiful place. And, and they did that blueberry sour. You and I split one, I think, the right. it, it, the sample. So, I, and that's, that's how... Uh, I feel most sours are are intended to be enjoyed. Same with like these hu- super boozy Russian Imperial barrel aged stouts. It's like you can't because they sell them in bombers. You can't hardly buy a six, you know, unless it is like one of the more crushable like Rosebud or I think it's Redbud. One of those um, that they sell in an actual six pack, you know, of cans, you can drink a couple of them. But where whenever there are those big bombers, you got to open it and split it amongst four or five people at minimum so you can actually drink the bottle without it going bad kind of yeah thing. exactly yeah so anyways i jacob let us know if we helped you out and if you say we didn't help you out i'll just forward it to joe and no big deal <laughs> no but thank you for writing in jacob and again i did uh already say this but i'll mention it again uh when you we do take your question on the show we do send you a 25 dollars gift card to homebrew supply or com, so you can get your questions is that Get your questions in at homebrewhappyhour.com, or you can text or leave a voicemail to 325-305-6107. We have a, I added this question in because it's a topic we've actually never talked about officially. It'll be short and quick, but I wanted to uh, get it on the air and also have a, a nice little shout out for who I recommend to you. So our second question comes from Eddie S., who used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Eddie wrote, I'm pretty sure it's illegal to ship alcoholic beverages. So my question is, how can I send a homebrewed beer in for a competition or send it to a friend who lives states away? And a note from Joshua. Oh, pardon me. That's my note. God, I'm an idiot. I was starting to say my small. I wrote a note in there to what on there. Oh, let me just read this like it's from Eddie. I'm not going to cut that out because I'm lazy. But now, (laughs) spoiler, everyone knows I'm an idiot. Okay, Eddie, I don't know if it's illegal to ship beer. Uh, I don't know if that is an objective truth or alcohol at beverages. I don't know if it it applies to all 50 states or not. Joe, before I I get into my my personal notes here for for the question, do you know? Because we haven't actually talked about it. I am in the same boat as you. I am almost I'm almost sure it's not specifically against the law to ship alcohol. Um, And now, again, I may be wrong Uh, on a federal level. I don't think it is now. Again, like you said, it may differ by state to state. I know distilling can differ state to state, Um, but but shipping wise there. I know for sure that like UPS and FedEx have like policies against it. But just because they have a policy doesn't mean it's actually illegal. Um, So the, the weird thing is I know that there's companies, especially somewhat recent companies that have popped up and allow you to choose a handful of beers and have them shipped to you. So I can't under, I can't understand how they would be able to functionally operate or, or you know, legally operate if, if that's the case. Yeah, I get, um, I get ads from those all the time now on Facebook. Of like, yeah, join this beer group, uh, you know, $50 a month and you get a four pack sent to you or six pack or whatever of beers from across right. the country. And that's and that's charging you that's purchasing beer over the internet and having it shipped and that's that i feel like that would almost be more against the law than just sh- not actually charging somebody and shipping somebody a beer you know so I, I wouldn't know any other way to send beers to a competition unless you drove them there personally you know so it might be I, one I, of those don't ask don't tell type things where 
like USP or pardon me, don't use USPS. I, I know for a fact that they're they're very explicit about you can't use them. And every website, if you just typed in how to ship my beer, that's like the number one rule everyone says is don't even try to use the postal service. Um but also don't because they're terrible. Sorry for any people who work for them. I know we have some listeners who have told me they're USPS. You're probably great people, but y'all mess up my mail every day. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh I know, you know, like you said, fat like when we pack up, hypothetically speaking, if we were ever to have done this or do it, and we pack up the beer and we put it in a box and it's very well packed and we put a fragile sticker on the outside and maybe a this way up if we had to, uh, we the carrier we may choose does not open up the box, go in it. They don't make you declare the uh, the content of it unless you were insuring it for the absolute value or whatever. I forget. There's, there's intricacies in that as well. But- I'm talking all this and I'm just thinking of the homebrew happy hour legal department right now going, uh, this part of the podcast is not, you know, we're not, we're not <laughs> lawyers. But actually, this, the legal department's tied with a, with a fancy little hat on. Like it's not, we're, we're not legitimate, but we, um, I will say this though. If you are going to ship out, because like Joe said, every uh, name, a homebrewer like, that doesn't ship their beer for like the NHC. Like yeah, if, you, if you're going to enter a contest, you got to ship. You got to ship your beer there. You're going to ship your beer and and, yeah. and, and, and and bottles specifically. I don't know of any contests that are taking crawlers yet, cans. I mean, the contests literally give you something to print out, put on <laughs> rubber band to your beer so you can put it in. The While you're packing. Exactly. Right. But I, I will say this, and this was my notes here because I, I wanted to make sure that I had the, uh, the website and everything right just because my pea-sized brain forgets even the easiest of details, but we actually use uh, CraftyShipping.com's little... They look like egg cartons. They're not... I think he makes them himself. I'm going to get them on at some point. Um, I forget who turned me on to him on on Instagram. Or no, you know what? It was Brandon. I was going to say it may be Brandon because he, he sent us That's multiple. who it was. It was Brandon. Oh, no, he didn't. He hadn't sent us. No, no, no. I, I get, <laughs> he talked about this hypothetical scenario where he right. might send us beer, but we ended up driving and meeting halfway, handing yeah. it off, high-fiving, and then we drove back with the beer that he intended for us. That's how we got it, just to cover my bases legally. Uh, but yeah, craftyshipping.com. And the cool thing is I didn't click on the links, but he has links for every state, the laws. He, he's, it is very helpful. Oh, that's he a good resource for, for the question asker that I already forgot his name, but yeah, uh, Eddie. I, I bet, I bet Eddie, you could check out the, some of the links there and I bet you can find out kind of how legally in question you are. Yeah. And, and, you know, uh, I forget his first name. The guy running crafty shipping doesn't give me a penny. We get nothing from sending you guys over there, but I have not found a better solution. They're not necessarily the, the most affordable option of shipping beer, but I promise you it's the best option. Like we, they're, they're a little bulky, but they, they're, they're intended that way. So, you know, you have ultimate protection. They work for bottles and cans, like multiple size, you know, we got a big, uh, kind of a, a, almost like a crowler size can, I think fit in one. And then you can go down to a slim yeah. 12 ounce bottle. So, and they're reusable. We, when Brandon sent them to us, we reused his. And then I just went ahead and got some from crafty shipping. Uh, so we, we have a whole stack there in Joe's office. It just for, for putting the beer in for when we want to drive it to places when we want to, mm -hmm. uh, take it legally and drop it off that, that kind of scenario. Not, not if it were illegal to ship beer, you better believe we've never done it. So anyways, Eddie, Go to craftyshipping.com and click on the link or just type in whatever state you're in laws for shipping or importing alcohol and you'll probably get a better answer. But I did want to include that on there. And you did also get a gift card because I said it on the show. So anyways, we have a third question for today's show and then we'll wrap it up. It came from Dan R who also used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Dan wrote, hey guys, love the show. Josh, you got robbed with the weight loss challenge. Uh, it's like the episode of The Office where Michael ends the basketball game when they are ahead because of the flagrant personal intentional foul. Exactly. And that one guy's like, uh, no, I didn't do it. And then Michael goes, oh, no, I didn't do it. That this is guy, This guy knows how to get his question read. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> I should show you. Office reference. Oh, yeah. like, and, oh, yeah. and he's on my side. Uh, right. uh, for the way, yeah. yeah. You should see how people are framing questions now. And and I've been emailing them back like, hey, next week we're using your question. Thanks for thanks for the uh, compliment. Hey, we're using your question. Yeah, Todd does suck. Thanks for that. <laughs> so anyway, um, 
My question is about mash and pre-boil volumes. I brew in a bag and cannot get the proper volume of water to use for the mash. I use Beersmith and I'm pretty sure my equipment setup is dialed in. But if you guys can talk to the importance of the proper volume and whether it is better to add more water before or after the boil, if need be. In parentheses, I also know this changes gravity. Uh, any advice would be great. Cheers, Dan. So I was telling you before we started recording, um, my understanding of what affects gravity might be totally wrong because like my dad, he lights in the summer when we're brewing our hotter weather, he likes to bring our volume up post boil during the cool down. And I was, I've always told him, dad, that's going to affect our numbers, man. That's my, that's my understanding of it. And and it never has, it's never affected it from the target numbers that I'm, I'm given from James who, who dials it in with brewer's friend now is what he's using. Um, that I was going to do a shameless plug to Dan, like, Oh, you use Beersmith. There's your problem. But I can't because it's great software. <laughs> it, it, it's really, it's, good, it's yeah. really good software. So I don't even want to yeah. dig at them. And Brad's a good guy. I wish he would do the show, but that's again, another thing, another issue. But what do you think? Because I know you and James are my go-to on brew days. And I've never asked you about volume because my dad and I have just always done it the way we've done it. Do you have a rule mm -hmm. of thumb for, getting volume well up? it may differ a little bit uh if you're doing like a brew in a bag versus a traditional mash with like a fly sparge um because when you're sparging you're adding so much more water back into the grain to kind of rinse those sugars out where that's a bit tougher with a brew in a bag because you're basically letting that that bag of grain sit in your in your mat in your water and then you're pulling that bag out um so i guess i, I so let me start off by typically saying, I think I use a ratio of about 1.25 quarts of water per pound of grain. Um, and, and that's for a traditional mash with a, with a sparge, like a fly sparge or a batch sparge. With the brew in the bag, I don't do a ton of them, but I would, I would probably say you want a little bit more of more water than that. Um, that way, the main, I think the main thing is going to be to make sure your grains are fully submersed in water. That's going to be the main thing. Um, and then after that, uh, after your 60 minute mash or however long you're planning on mashing, you pull those grains up, whatever you're left with, if you can add water at that point versus post boil, if you can add water at that point to top off to where you want to be pre boil, uh, that way you can, hopefully you can try and add that water through the grain, uh, through the grain bed. And that way, any water that you are adding collects some amount of sugar, uh, to try and increase efficiency as much as possible because that's the main downside to brewing a bag is you're you're going to lose some efficiency by not doing a traditional mash. Uh, so a lot of people account for that by adding a couple extra pounds of grain or dumping a, a, a pound or so of DME in at, uh, during the boil to kind of make up for that, that efficiency loss. Um, so I don't know if I answered the question all that well. Um, again, I don't do a ton of brew in the bags, so I, it, it's hard for me to know exactly what ratio you want to use, but I know you can certainly find there's websites, or if you just Google BIAB starting water volume calculator, you're going to find multiple websites with a calculator to generate how much water it thinks you're going to want. But again, when it comes to that second part um, to add either pre or post boil, I would recommend, especially in a brew in a bag, to add it pre boil and if you can, add it by dumping it through your grains to try and get as much sugar that may have been left behind out of those. Um, and then, yeah, to yours, you're, you're definitely affecting your numbers some by adding water in after you're done boiling. What I'm assuming is happening is you're, you're hitting a little bit above what the 70% efficiency that we calculated those recipes at. Right. So you're basically hitting a little bit better efficiency and then adding some water to get your full volume and, and getting right back to where, Okay. Well, so it's so. been dumb luck then is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> oh, perfect. And it, it works out like that. It's amazing how many times it's like that, that I've done that same kind of thing, or it's like, you know, I'm, I'm at four and a half gallons of, of after I'm done boiling. And, um, you know, it's like, I, I want to add, I want to get up to five or five and a half and, you know, you add some water and then you're like a point off, you know, it's like, well, how, how, you know, how did that end up? working out so well it, it's weird how brew days tend to do that you know, really like so many yeah. so many things can go wrong and, and 
generally do. And then at the end, it's just like usually everything somehow magically. Yeah, it worked out. The beer is good. Yeah. Yeah. Or drinkable, which, you know, I've been told my standards are too low with if you haven't pitched beer and, you know, if at least one brew day of the year, your standards aren't high enough. And I'm like, man, my standards suck because I like everything we're brewing like at my house or up there at the office or what you're taking to the office. And like, just like you said earlier, you and James, every time y'all brew a beer, you're like, Uh, it didn't really turn out and then i try it i'm like uh okay maybe my palate sucks because this is wonderful and then a thousand people will compliment the beer like your uh the last pale you did was my dad's favorite beer i think like ever the the one you gave me a five gallon of uh yeah it's got to do with like having a like a particular flavor or something in your mind and then just maybe not quite getting that exact you know it's not that's bad it's just that it wasn't, wasn't what you wanted exactly okay. kind of as you intended so well i don't know i think james and i both kind of fall in that anytime place. that you are dissatisfied with your beer just send it back to me and uh right, we'll exactly. take it my family loves it like your your pail was a huge hit and what's so funny that that bohemian pilsner that james did that he was like i hate it it's terrible we had it the christmas party Everyone loved it. Every guest Todd has hosted from the Christmas party to present day, that's been their favorite. That was their go-to beer on tap. Like, and, and I get it because it was the more like the cold. The, yeah, the, the Kolsch was gone and everything else was like the winter warm. Not a winter warmer. Pardon me. Um, the celebration clone. Mm-hmm, the the mm-hmm. So, you know, super hoppy, super yeah. hoppy for uh, the breakfast stout is not. I mean, as much as I love it, it doesn't hurt my feelings when people don't because it's not a standard like if you go for from, everybody it's yeah. not for everybody certainly right. and and it was very coffee forward so especially if you don't oh, like coffee that turned out so good though, i know man. isn't it so good oh. i couldn't stop i couldn't stop drinking that stuff at the christmas party oh the the vendors that came to visit i won't mention by name because i don't want to embarrass them but they for for see, the one that we are working with with amazon stuff they mm-hmm. they came up and and floated it they floated. Oh, nice. They floated. Nice. No, no, I was pissed. Not nice. Yeah, well, sure, but I was sitting I there mean, watching they, them. They drink. Had, <laughs> I was sitting there like had, dry January. Joshua judging them. Uh, <laughs> no, it was. It, we had a good time, but but uh, yeah, I didn't get to finish that one. But, but the good thing is, my pop. We still have a ton left at his house. Nice. So, so coming up, how many days? Today is the 29th. We're recording this on. Ooh, this weekend's gonna be. It's Super Bowl weekend. I'm drinking again. Oh, oh man. <laughs> and then when I come up there. Uh, you did come out. You did come hang out. I know it's so hard to ask you to come hang out at the ranch because you you have to go home. <laughs> like you, right? Like you right. Could, you're right. I'm down to I'm down to either try a few up here and at the ranch, or just take them all to the ranch and, and try them there because we've got like three or four. I was gonna say we have a good chunk where yeah, yeah, if you're cool coming to the ranch, that'll be fun. It'll be a uh, the, I looked at the weather forecast. It'll be definitely a clear night for a, a campfire. Nice. So it'll be good. I'm you know. That's, I, I, this next week, yeah, early next yeah, week? Monday, okay. Monday the third, cool. I'll be up there. So Wait. I'll bring the cigars, and we already got the booze. And yeah. I'm looking, Liz can make something because I'm, I'm not watching my weight anymore. <laughs> I lost the contest, so I'm just going fat, Josh. Uh, I'm go. surprised it doesn't say. I don't know if you watched the last couple of weeks. Right here at the bottom, for people who are watching us on YouTube, uh, it, we have our names in there. Like Joe's will have his name at the bottom, and mine is at the bottom here. Uh, Todd had changed mine to Fat Josh. Uh, <laughs> he put his as like weight loss champion of the world, Todd Burns, and then he put mine as Fat Josh. So that's yeah, messed up. <laughs> yeah, I really miss him. I miss him a lot. Can't wait for them. Safe travels, guys. Hope y'all get back in uh, good health. Uh, don't bring over any plague virus or whatever from Europe. Blah blah blah. But anyway, uh, I am Dan. Yes, pre boil. If you're adding it for for your brew in a bag. And um, like he said, too, there are, thank God for the internet. I know Brewer's friend, I mean, I'm sure Brad on his website has the calculator, too. But I know for a fat Brewer's friend, do. I think Homebrew Supply might actually have that calculator. On. We may. We may. But again, if you if you Google it, you'll find yeah. multiple places to kind of calculate that. And 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 let me let me just make sure it's not going to be, a, it's not going to ruin the beer if you add water to it post boil. You're going to drop your numbers some, like you're basically diluting it with water, which is, you know, it's it's going to drop your sugar, overall sugar content down a bit just by volume. Uh, but it, it's it's not going to ruin the beer. So, I mean, uh, there's nothing wrong with doing that, um, especially if you're, you ended up a little bit higher ABV or a little bit higher sugar content gravity than you intended and you're a little low in volume, then, you know, adding some water post boil is not going to 
not going to affect, not going to hurt you. Maybe this is a good time to sales pitch the Cooler Brew system because it must be that effective that it. That's why my pop and I just aren't noticing it. It's just that we're, certainly like because you're like you said, I, we're y'all's recipes that you make are for a seventy percent efficiency. Yeah, and I've I've used I've used a cooler for a long time brewing at home, and um, I've tended to be closer to 75 with that. And then like the, the Herm system we have here at the shop that where you're constantly recirculating the mash, like we've hit over 80%. No way. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. What do you do in that point then? Like, uh, do you, if you, if you were, are you recalculating the recipe from scratch basically when y'all brew on that system or what do you, Oh, well, yeah, that, that I do tend to, if I'm creating a new recipe for it, I'll tend to make sure my efficiency is a little higher than what it kind of defaults at. Um, but no, I, I typically, um, and even if I calculate higher, I typically shoot for like, uh, to try and put like 16 to 18 gallons of, for a 15 gallon batch into the fermenter, uh, just to make sure I can fill to the brim every keg. And, uh, you know, my alcohol content ends up being closer, you know, to where it's intended for that recipe. Yeah. Nice. And that again, too, I wish we had a straightforward answer like uh, this is the way and this is how it is every time. But it does depend on I mean, at at the foundation, it depends on your system. Right. Like. Right. And that's and that's another good point to bring up, I guess, is is one of the nicest one of the nicer things about doing a traditional mash with sparge is you don't necessarily have to worry about whether to add water after the boil or pre boil. You can just continue to sparge longer until you hit the volume that you need. And you know that all the water you're sparging through is picking up sugar. So you're just boosting your efficiency at the same time as you're making sure you've got the right pre pre boil volume. So. Yep. Joe, my friend, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you. Uh, you coming on the show. I, I may have a permanent spot available for you. We'll talk when I'm up there Monday. <laughs> we'll see how Todd feels. Uh, if he, if I even, you know, well, I'm renegotiating the co-host contract, so we'll see how that goes, but right. I, I do I appreciate, appreciate you, you for having me. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right, I'll see you soon, man. All right. Sounds good. And that will do it for this episode of the homebrew happy hour. If you have a question you would like us to discuss on a future episode, you can go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on the submit a question link at the top of the page, or now you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107. Thank you to our show sponsor, Spike Brewing Equipment, for supporting us and the home brewing community. Learn more about their incredible equipment at spikebrewing.com forward slash homebrew happy hour and make the most of your brew day. On behalf of Ladit Joe Ermis and the Pearl Media Network, I'm Joshua Steubing. Thank you for listening. This program is made possible by the checkbook of Mr. Todd Burns and by contributions to our newly launched Patreon by viewers like you. Visit patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour and join our community. Thank you.